Oh, I don't have any tea. Guys, we are off to a great start already. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a puppy interrupted crafty podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I'm your human host, Gabby. You can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and all my hand eyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi and Once Upon a Corgi.com. This is episode 108, and we are back after a two week hiatus, totally by accident. So uh, I do have a good amount of crafting to show you. <laughs> I'm going to start off with show notes. Those are below the video. We do have a Ravelry group. That is What's Upon a Corgi podcast under the groups tab in Ravelry. And I think the only uh, other place you can find me on the internet is now Goodreads. I actually updated my Goodreads account because I've been reading more if you haven't been keeping up with that. So if you want to follow me there, you can. I'm most active on Instagram. I just thought maybe it was time since I had somebody add me on Goodreads and now I have one friend. This is already a tangent and we're not even past the introduction. <laughs> Thank you to all returning viewers for coming back and hello and welcome to all new viewers. Thank you so much for checking out our little corner of the crafting internet. Before we get into what I have been working on, we have a couple things going on. The pumpkin make along, which I am hosting with my wonderful pump queen, Joanna of Stitching the High Notes, is going on until October 31st. I have an FO thread up in the Ravelry group and we are organizing our prizes. I just have to take pictures of them and put them in the spreadsheet and then put them up in the Ravelry group. We have, um, some yarn, some fiber from my prize bin, and I believe we have a couple patterns, and then I have to check in with Joanna about the rest. It's been a crazy couple of months. Please bear with me. We also have the Swan Along going on. I'm just going to have this be a very informal for our formal wear uh, hashtag situation on Instagram. I did open up a Ravelry thread, but I don't think there's gonna be any prizes or anything. Just make your swanning outfits and swan away. And I think that's it for announcements for podcasting things. I will be at the India Untangled Marketplace at Ryan Beck Weekend, which is in 14 days. No. What day is it? <gasps> yeah, 14 days. So <laughs> if you have tickets to the marketplace, I will be there. I think I'm booth 34. And if not, I will be there all Rhinebeck weekend. So please, if you see me, stop me, say hello. I'm awkward, but I'm very happy to say hello to you. If you want hugs, I give hugs. If you want photos, I do photos. I, that feels really weird to say. Um, if you just want to show me what you've made out of my yarn, I will literally die of happiness. And it's just going to be great. And I can't wait. You have to bring me a tennis ball iron if you want to show things, or you have to come on the bed if you want to be in the podcast. Stuck his head under the bed. All right, with that, let us get into the crafting, starting with what I am wearing. I'm wearing a lot of things because it is cold in this house. It is not a house, it's an apartment, but it is a windy fall day and it's breezy and I love it. So outside in, we have the Relish Shawl by Samantha Guerin Designs. This is the one skein version of her shawl sets that she did with Post Stitch. Yes, I keep wanting to say Stitch Fix. So Post Stitch is doing kits for these and she has also released the two skein version, which is the Basque Shawl. Uh, I knit this out of my hand-eyed yarn on my penny base in the, the World colorway from my Cat Tarot deck. The next layer is my Hope Cardigan. Uh, I am blanking on the name of who designed this, but I did it out of Lana Plante Ramboulet Dinah Marigold. Shed some layers. The bottom, stand up is my Maritimo by Caitlin Hunter. I knit this out of Bad Wolf Girl Studios in her Hagrid colorway, a one of a kind colorway, and then my Nightmares plus 10 because I didn't know I needed a third color. I'm also wearing a knit pencil skirt on the bottom and some floral on black because that's my neutral and that's where I go. And that leads us into finished objects. So I have finished my Maritimo. This will be my Sunday Rhinebeck sweater for my red Rhinebeck. Take off the shawl. I love it. I did it out of the 7525 sock base uh, merino nylon from Bad Wolf Girl Studios. It's so soft. It's so squishy. It hangs beautifully. I love, let's stand up again. 
I really love the length of it. I think the first stripe hits me right above my natural waist. It falls just to my hips. The sleeves are super cute and covered in dog hair. And as most Caitlyn Panther most Caitlyn Hunter patterns are, they're very easy to follow. And I'm just so excited to have a sweater out of Meg's yarn. I love her colorways and she just released a bunch of fall tonals and it's been so hard not to buy all of them. So I think somebody should, so I can't. Do it to save me, please. Yeah, not much else to say about that. Um, I think I did it on a US size three needle. Uh, I've been linking to my Ravelry pages and actually keeping up on my Rav Ravelry projects. I'm proud of it because I'm terrible at Ravelry. Uh, yep, I don't think I made any modifications uh, besides shortening the length of it a little bit. I think she has you go to like 13 or 10 inches for the body. It is a bottom up sweater, but I don't like things going that far down my hips. I have a long torso and I have not a huge distinction between like waist, bust waist hips. So I like things like cut in at the right spots. Does that, that doesn't make sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that is my FO. I feel like it's been done for a while. I just haven't podcasted in a while. So according to my show notes, last time I talked to you, my night court top and my tool skirt were still whips. I have finished those. I have worn those. I will put a picture in here from one of our wineries. <laughs> I did wear them on Saturday for my bachelorette party and it was the perfect outfit. It was super comfy. I swanned like no one has swanned before. It's great. And I'm 100% wearing that tool skirt to Indian Tangled and nothing's stopping me. And I'm so excited now that I've made that decision. I will be wearing the night court top to a wedding we are attending in October and I will go more into that in future makes. The only other finished object I have for you, I can't show you because I have gifted it already and it was a tiny tool skirt for my friend Sam's daughter for her birthday. Uh, it's got the same sparkly starburst tool outer layer and then Sam let me use some of um it was like a light pink satin material I'm not sure of the content for the lining and it looks so cute and I, I'm obsessed with it and I kind of want one but I don't but I do so that has been gifted I will put a picture here somewhere and that's what I've been making that's it by that's it I mean those are my 18 finished objects that I just talked about for 10 seconds. There are all some things I need to like tweak on the night court top, but it's really just like refinishing some edges and cutting threads that I never noticed before and maybe taking out some basting stitches. What are you gonna do? Oh, I forgot my spinning. Okay, into works in progress. I don't know what order to do these in. So we'll start with socks. I did put a huge dent into my Red Robin socks by Curious Handmade. I am knitting this out of my hand dyed yarn. This will be my pumpkin make along entry. I don't know if I showed you this. I don't think I did. I haven't podcasted. I have finished one sock. Do I have a blocker? I do. This is why you bought these, Gabby, to show off on podcasts. I am knitting this out of my Samhain colorway on my Isaac base, which is 100% superwash Polworth. And sock number one is done. I did the 64 stitch count, a two by two twisted rib, fish lips kiss heel, and my standard rounded toe. I love this pattern in this yarn. I think the slip stitch really shows off the speckles and I love a good pattern that sort of just like emphasizes one strand. So if you have a speckly yarn, you can emphasize one speckle, which is my favorite. I don't think I have a favorite speckle on this sock yet. I haven't really looked at it that much. If I find it, I will point it out to you. So sock number one is done. And I have cast on and gotten through the heel of sock number two. I just finished the heel yesterday. This is a prettier side. So here we are. I'm using my little pumpkin progress keeper to keep track. And this has been my dying 
ish uh, knitting. I'm doing it on size 2.25 millimeter US 1 Haya Haya Sharps. And I, I'm hoping I can get these done for Ryan Beck. I think I can. I mean, it's a sock. They go by pretty quickly. I don't have a ton of waiting around time. I did a majority of this. I finished this sock and got to the heel of this sock all while um, doing the Western Connecticut yarn crawl at Ascension Time in Bethel the other weekend, which was super fun. Thank you to everybody who came out uh, and said hello and supported the shop. So yeah, I'm hoping, I think I can finish this for Rhinebeck. It's not like you'll be able to see them. The boots I wear to Rhinebeck uh, like go up to my knees, but I'll know I'm wearing them, which is what matters. I am keeping them in my Mataru sock bag, which I adore with all of my tiny heart. The next one is a new cast on. Uh, Pippin Pin, who designed the Mount Pleasant top, which I'm obsessed with. I don't know how I haven't knit a second one. Uh, I'm hoping that if I play my die cards right, I can dye two extra skeins of Rodney on my iron base and cast on a Mount Pleasant in that. So I have one in my yarn for the shop slash for me to wear. And then I have something to knit on during Indie in case I have time to knit on stuff. I don't know. Anyway, she came out with another sweater pattern, and this is called the Cat Bells. Not the Cat Bells, just Cat Bells. And I have cast on, and I'm in the body, and oh my llama, I cannot. I am knitting this out of, here, where's this game? There's a little bit of a story behind this. I originally um, didn't know the weight slash didn't look into the weight. So I pulled out my Green Mountain Spinnery, which is a fingering weight in the Ancho colorway that I bought for a uh, pom-pom sweater. And then I did a swatch and I cast on the sweater and I got done with the front and the back shoulder pieces and then decided that no, I should just trust the pattern. And so I ripped it out and I cast it on in this Mountain View Coopsworth Lamb's Wool. Uh, I got this at Rhinebeck last year. It's a worsted weight by Bat and Kill Fibers. Nope, it's spun by Bat and Kill Fibers. It's from M Marina and Richard Dubé. Uh, I don't know. I'll try and put a picture of the tag. I don't know if this is going to be focused or not. But I bought this last year to do another pom-pom sweater out of the winter edition that was released last year. And then decided, no, this should be a cat bells. So I cast on again. <laughs> and here I am. I'm so close to being done with the body. Uh, it's at my natural waist right now. The pattern calls for you to knit the body 13 inches. I think I'm going to knit it to 11 and then add the two inches of ribbing. So then in full, it's two inches and it should sit right at my hips. <sighs> So much. It's a super easy uh, like texture pattern to follow. The construction is really interesting. I love the way it fits on her and just the ease. I am knitting the 37 inch bust on the US 6. I do have a slightly tighter gauge than most people so I'm hoping that brings it into maybe like a 36 inch bust but it's definitely going to have more positive ease than what I usually go for. I'm knitting on my Knitter's Pride uh, Zings, or Knit Pro Zings, on the size 6. I've got my burrito, keeping track of the length. There he is. There's my burrito. Um, I love it. It is a very rustic wool, but it's very light. It's very airy, but it's going to be super warm, and I'm so excited. The only, not the only thing, what I am doing, because it is a garter stitch pattern in the round. I have two balls attached. So I knit the pattern round the right way, like the usual way. And then when I get to the purl round, I have attached a second ball. So I will pick up the second ball and then knit from the inside with the second ball. So each round I'm knitting one way and then going back with another yarn and knitting the other way. That way there's no purling, it's all knitting, and that has definitely sped up this process. I heard um, on Pippin Pins, I'm blinking on her actual name, 
I'm so sorry. On her podcast, one of her testers started doing that. So then I figured I could also do that. I didn't look up anything on how to do it. I just sort of started winging it and nothing's falling apart. So I'm going to keep going with it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. This is going to be my Saturday sweater. So God help us if it's hot out because I will melt. And that's fine because I'm going to wear this all day. This is sweater number three for my red Rhinebeck. I'm so ready. I'm so excited. It's just, ugh, it's giant and it's squishy and it's comfy, but it's like sophisticated looking. And it's got this nice like billowing effect when you get to the ribbing and I think on the sleeves. Ugh, I'm just picturing myself drinking hot cider and eating falafel in this and it makes me so happy. We do only have 14 days and it is a worsted weight sweater. So I'm slightly nervous about finishing it, but I also have faith that I may just stress knit the rest of this in like two days. We'll see what happens. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, I just want to knit on it. Okay. I just stop mooning about this. <laughs> So I'm keeping this in my uh, Faces of the Moon bag by Matterroot because I am a sucker for her bags and I'll never stop. I'm never going to stop. And this has mostly been my watching The Office knitting at the end of the day because it's pretty mindless. So I only need to pay attention a little bit while I work on it. And that brings us to our last knit work in progress. And that is a very new cast on. I have cast on the Hat Dana by Denise Bayron. Bay Bayron? So sorry if I'm butchering your name. Oops, let me just pull my needle out real quick. She is having a meetup on Saturday at one o'clock on the hill at Rhinebeck. So I'm hoping I can get this done for that. And I am knitting this out of my hand dyed yarn, Once Upon a Corgi, on my Seasel base, which is an Aran weight. Um, she calls for a worsted weight in hers, but I'm going to do the smallest size. So I, the yardage is not that far off from what she used in the sample. And this is in the death colorway. And it is this super simple, um, triangle shape right now with the cable going up the spine. And I am very excited to wear this as a cowl. I'm not one for bandanas or things on my head so much because I have a lot of hair and a very odd shaped head. I'm like, my head is just shaped to push hats off the top of them, but I love a good cowl and I love a good bandana style cowl. So I am super stoked to wear this in that way. And I'm very excited to get this death colorway uh, knit up. I am knitting it on the recommended needle size, which is a US six. Did I go up and I might have gone up a needle size. I don't have the pattern in front of me, just my Ravelry page, which is not helpful to anybody. Let me pull up her Ravelry page. Yeah, so I went up a needle size and I'm still doing the smallest size. Uh, and I figure if I run out of yarn, I'll just cut the ribbing short. Nothing to worry about. And I have been working on this for about two days now. This might become my um, dyeing knitting just because I do really want it done for Rhinebeck. I'm super excited. I'm hoping to get it done for Indian Tangled so I can uh, put it up in the booth. Yes. Because this is just going to be such a fun knit, especially for like the sheepy sheep skeins where like you kind of just want one skein because you're not ready to commit to a whole sweater. But this would be a perfect project for one of those skeins. Mm, I'm so excited. Yeah, uh, not a ton else to say about it. I love the way the pattern is written. The design of the, like the layout of the pattern itself, I think is very well thought out. It's the colors, the layout, it's great. I love it. <sighs> so here we are. Surprise, surprise. Matter root bee bag. I don't have a problem, I swear. And those are my knitting works in progress. Ooh, let me shake the camera, have some tea. Now spinning. I have been doing some spinning. Let me get my little BB. I still haven't figured out a name for this guy, but I have finished the third, I don't know how to say it, one third of my Lyrian wing spin. There it is. Uh, so I have three bats. I split three bats into three 
sections and then one section and then put them into groups of three so then like one section of each bat is in a level we'll call it a level so I finished level one I have to move on to level two I don't know why I did like split it up the way I did because there's no way to tell which bit is from which bat and so my plan now is to just spin the three bobbins until they're full ply those and then just start spinning again because I don't have any storage bobbins and I'm not totally sure how to get these off of these bobbins and onto my bigger bobbins. I feel like I had this grand plan of how I was going to manage this and then it just all went to hell. So we're gonna go with it. So my new plan is to just spin these till they're full, ply them, and then start over again. I don't think it will be that, I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about it because then uh, my brain's gonna fall out of my ears. I am spinning this on my Eel Nano wheel. It is a 3D printed wheel. I will leave a link to the website and I am spinning the keeping them in this bin that I just carry around the house with me so sometimes I bring it to bed and I don't spin I just put it next to the bed so I know it's there I am spinning the Illyrian Wings Bat by Classy Squid Fiber Co and oh my goodness if you go to Needles Up and she has these A buy me one and then B just hold it daintily in your hands and love it because that's what they need also, her potions bats are killing me. Those little things are going to be the death of me. <sighs> okay, enough. Enough fangirling. Yes, this is a mix of Corydale, Poor War, Sick no Nope. Corydale? No. Ooh! Oh my god, they're different! Okay. So, the three of them are Ramadale, Corydale, Polworth, Mulberry Silk, Muga Silk, Silk Noil, and Angelina. Alright, one of them is... Ramaldale. That's fine. Whatever. Ooh, maybe that explains. I thought I just felted one. <gasps> oh, I love it. Oh, that's gonna be cool. <sighs> okay. And it's just this super dark chocolatey brown with little bits of sparkle and hints of cream and red and blues and it's just perfection in a bat. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna need everyone to buy all these so I can't buy any more. I'm gonna die. My plan with this is to get a fingering to sport weight three ply yarn and knit myself a cardigan for the wedding for like the like the little jackets that people get for like the after party and stuff. That's the plan. I have no pattern in mind. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I thought about turning the love note into a cardigan. I might see if there's a cardigan with like a lacy yoke pattern out there. I don't know if I like have the brain space to try to design something myself at this moment, but that's, I think, what I'm gonna do. I think this is going to lend itself really well to a, you, a, probably just like a very simple cardigan with a little bit of detail on the yoke. I'm kicking myself a little bit about not doing the Lobelia cardigan. I could knit it twice, but I don't like knitting the same pattern twice. <sighs> Once I get the single spun, then I'll worry about the pattern. We'll just leave it at that. I lost the top. There it is. And that's been all of my crafting. I do have some sewing plans to get into a little bit of stash acquisition stuff. And then uh, on to do the rest of the podcast. I'm going to go put some more hot water in my tea and I'll be right back with plans of making. Let's start off with things that I've purchased. So I am in a hard spending freeze until 60% of the wedding is paid off and we're at 53% right now. I did break the bank, not break the bank, I did break that a little bit and I bought a print from Charlie Bowater and it's sitting in the tube right behind my camera glaring at me because I don't have a frame to put it in so I can't hang it up right now. We're gonna wait. And I have almost bought so much yarn and so much more fiber. And I keep telling myself, Rhinebeck is coming, wait for Rhinebeck. I already blew all the money I saved up for the honeymoon for Edinburgh Yarn Festival, so that's right out the window. But we went to Affordable Fabrics the other night to go look for fabric for some wedding stuff, one of which I totally forgot to even look at, now that I'm thinking about it. And we did not find what we went there for. We were looking for um, some heavy duty 
cloak material and then I wanted to find some green velvet for some tablecloths and instead I walked out with a yard and a quarter of this dark charcoal plaid suiting with, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, tiny threads of a uh, burnt orange sparkle going through them. I couldn't help myself. Uh, if you are new to the podcast, Affordable Fabrics is a fabric store in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, where everything is $2.99 a yard. Uh, my grandmother used to go there all the time for her quilting stuff, and then my friends Margaret and Danielle showed me them when we were real big in the SEA because Tudor gowns take like six yards of fabric, and if it's $3 a yard, it's way more manageable to do that. So I've been going to them for probably half of my handmade wardrobe. It's usually a hit or miss, kind of like TJ Maxx. Like you never really know what they're gonna have in stock, but it's definitely a good day of just like buckling down and searching, and you can get some really good stuff. So I picked up, this is one of the remnants. It was a yard and a quarter, I believe. So it was only $3.50. I am hoping I can squish out enough to do a robe blue. Put a picture here of it. My plan is to do all of the facings in a con the facings, maybe the collar, and I believe there's a back piece. I might just cut out the back like bow accent and just do the sleeveless version with contrast facing and maybe a contrast collar. I've been trying to make this dress for years. Ever since Katie from Inside Number 23 started making them, I have been obsessed with them. I really want to try and do the puff sleeve, but I don't know if I'm going to have the fabric. I just, I love it so much. And I have bought, I want to say at least three different kinds of fabric to make this dress. And every time I just go, no, it's not right. It's not the one. I can't make it. I bought Disney princess fabric, but I'm really not going to wear baby pink Disney princess dress. Maybe a shirt, maybe a skirt. Ah, uh, probably not even that. I already started de-stashing it because I went to like three different Joann's to find it. But this, I think this would be super cute in it. And if I don't have enough, I think my plan is to just do uh, like an A-line skirt or maybe a modified Edwardian walking skirt that Kristen's been making all the time. Just something. I need something out of this. It's spooky and it's right up my new wardrobe requirement of all black or red and my shawl is falling down. I don't know why I'm gushing about it. It's literally just like a yard of suiting fabric and I love it so much. I'm just putting all of the the hopes and dreams of everything I've said no to buying to save up for this wedding into this one piece of fabric. This is going to be a mistake in the long run, but that's fine. I love it. I love it so much. So that is my plan with this. I don't know when I'm going to do it. I'm probably not going to do it before Ryan Beck. Maybe for uh, New England Fiber Festival. I think this would be a really nice outfit for that. My other plan is I have all of this black uh, crepe de chine. Crepe de chine? I don't know. Fabric. I used this for the lining of my sparkly tool skirt for the night court outfit and I did get enough to make a half circle maxi skirt out of it and I put up a poll on Instagram because I do plan to wear this with the night court top to the wedding on the 13th. I just wasn't sure if I wanted to do a maxi skirt or the cascade skirt by Megan Nielsen and so I put out a poll and everyone says the cascade skirt and I I feel like that I can also wear all of the time. So I think I'm gonna do the cascade skirt. <sighs> I love it. I'm so excited. I'm hoping it's going to be a very simple, um, so it's a wrap style high to low skirt uh, with three different versions. So you can have buttons, a bow in back, and a bow in front. I think I'm gonna do the bow in back because that way it looks like it ties so then it's very adjustable with how I'm feeling that day. <laughs> So that is the plan. Uh, I'm hoping I can squeeze some time out this weekend to do it since the wedding is the 13th. We'll see how the die schedules go. So that is all my crafting. Those are my plans for crafting. Pip and Pin just came out with another new pattern. So I really want to knit that, but I should finish what I have. All right, the rest of this is shop news and beyond crafting. So if you are not here, thanks computer. 
The rest of this is shop news and beyond crafting. So if you're not here for that and just want to see what I'm making, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue on. Shop update news. I had a... I haven't really had an update. We are deep in Indie Untangled prep. It has taken over the house. It's taken over the dye pots. It's taken over part of the bedroom. It's everywhere. So to help kind of make room for the stock that we are creating, we are having an Isaac base sale. We are not bringing the Isaac base to Indian Tangled, so we have a ton of it in the house. It's 20% off your order of Isaac base and ready to ship kits. There's no coupon code needed and just gets applied to the cart at the end. So that is at onceuponacorgi.com. So we are probably not going to have a shop update until after India Untangled, but I do want to let you know we will be putting pre-orders up for our Ryan Beck color this year, and that is called Previous Yarn Engagement. It is this super warm, tanny mauve with speckles of browns and greens and grays, and oh, I love it. I love it so much. So much. So this will be at Indie Untangled, and then if you are not attending the marketplace or not able to go to Rhinebeck, I will be doing pre-orders from the 13th to the 20th. It is available on the Penny Base and the Marie Cutie Base only. And then that way you can still get the Rhinebeck colorway and enjoy it as much as I do. Um, pre-orders will go up at 9 a.m. No, I think I have it scheduled for 5 a.m. on the 13th because we are attending a wedding that day. Jake is in the wedding. So I'm not totally sure what our schedule is. So I've already scheduled all of the posts. It's all set, ready to go. And then when I get back from Rhinebeck, I will start dying and shipping them out. <sighs> I love them. I love them so much and I really want a sweater out of them. I'm just gonna hold them here. So they are called Previous Yarn Engagement because all year everyone's asking, what do you wanna do in October? And my answer is, I can't, I have a previous yarn engagement. It's Rhinebeck weekend. I love it, I love it so much. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, I think that's it for shop news. I just finished shipping out the last of the Baudelaire kits and the Baudelaire top pattern is now live on Ravelry. I will put a link to it in the show notes. I'm hoping to open up pre-orders for the kits again after New England. I love this pattern. I'm going to wear it at Indie. I really want to make another version with the three-quarter sleeve. It is by Melissa of Skinanigans and I'm so excited for it to be out in the world. Every tester who has knitted up did a fantastic job and I'm super jealous of all of them and I'm gonna need like 10 more at least. I think that's it for shop update stuff. So the rest of this is beyond crafting and that is what I've been up to besides crafting. So let's get into reading. I don't know, I don't think I did mention this. Last I, since the last episode, I have now finished Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Moss and so I have finished the Throne of Glass series. <laughs> I knew I would be hurt during this read. I just, I was gonna say, it's like when you're fighting somebody and they feign a blow to the left, so you block the left side and then they come at you with a right, which I've never actually personally done. That's, it just, it, oh, it was so, it was such a good series. It was just mm, so, mm, so good. <laughs> I just, uh, I love her character development and the way that she hints, like the foreshadowing is just next level. I don't know how this woman does anything ever. Just, uh, it was so good. And like, she wrapped it up in a very clean way. And the, uh, just like the, the lines like she matched the end of the book lines to different books it was just it was very good I don't want to spoil anything because it is a very intense series and there are a lot of things that happen even just between books two and three I've been keeping track of where my friend has been reading it because I really want to talk to her about it but I don't want to spoil anything too soon so I've just been treading carefully and then pinning everything I see it's just, it's so good. It was so good. <laughs> I can't. I think it was the longest book of the series. Yeah. So now I'm just patiently waiting for Crescent City to come out on March 3rd. I should have it in my little hands by March 5th. 
and then we'll see what state I'm in on March 13th, emotionally and reading wise. Okay, enough of that. I did. Where's my Kindle? So I finished Kingdom of Ash. It was so good. I wish I owned the book so I could go back and reread them. That was probably my biggest disappointment with getting books from the library is with her books you need to like go back and look at the other books and like take notes and I couldn't do that with library books but I do plan on getting them for myself for Christmas slash November 5th. Okay <laughs> so I finished that. Uh, I don't I yeah I mean I have read A Court of Thorns and Roses like a total of 800 times now because I had to keep rereading it for dying the advent calendars. It got to the point where Jake asked what's the big deal with this. It was bad. So I have started reading, you're probably not gonna be able to see this, I'll put it on the screen, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness and it is also a really good book. It's a contemporary witches, vampires, demons, trilogy. I believe it's also a show on stars right now. I've been recommended this book a couple times and I finally sat down to read it. I got it from the library and I'm just really enjoying the way that she's handling the folklore around vampires and witches and demons and kind of like bringing them into just like being old wives tales like the way they handle the garlic or a vampire not not being able to come into your house and explaining like the daylight. It also helps that they're all like Cambridge scholars so like all the vampires end up being scientists because they're like hey we live forever so we'll, why not just make science, science stuff. It's great. Most of it takes place in a library. My favorite character is Sam and he is the archival librarian who fetches all the manuscripts. I want to be him when I grow up. It's really good. It's it's really good. It's definitely a romance. It's a fantasy. It's a little bit of mystery. It's not really a murder mystery, but there was a murder. I think we're just sort of starting to pick up into the conflict. I'm about, I'm 42% done and I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I wish I picked this up earlier. And it's very fall feeling, like it's the beginning of the school year. They're at, are they at Cambridge or Oxford? They're at Oxford. No, they're in Cambridge. Yeah. And like she, uh, the main character, Diana is from Connecticut. So like there's a whole Yale section, which is right down the road for me. So I can like picture that whole scene. Fall in New Haven is good. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a nice, easy read, which it's a giant book. So I don't know why it, I mean, it's an easy read for me and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, if you haven't read it, highly recommend. It's not graphic but like the romance is sort of just starting kind of thing. I also really like, I don't think this is a spoiler, no. I just like how in-depth she's gone into like the folklore of the like the witches. So the main character is like the great 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 granddaughter of, uh, what's her name? I forgot her name. Hold on. I know how to use technology. <laughs> okay. So Diana is the great 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 granddaughter of Rebecca Bishop, one of the witches executed in the Salem Witch Trials, and her father is a proctor, so she's got like old witch blood on both sides, so she's a super powerful witch, but she also doesn't want to use her magic because of things. And they sort of just explain how like if they just don't if they kind of like let the human panic go by, they just sort of realize like, oh, witches also like do nice things like heal stuff and also like keep the snow away. And they sort of like root into one society and then kind of blend in that way. And then like the vampires all end up, yeah, most of them end up just being scientists because they can go to college, they can do research. And then after a little time of it being suspicious, they sort of move into a different country and then do it all again. So a bunch of them are just super doctors and scientists and research assistants, which is great. And then the demons are explained as more of like artists and musicians, because they're not totally sure like how the demons came about, but they just have a lot more magic and energy. They have like more of a build up energy. So then you can't really tell they're demons unless you're a witch or a vampire. So then humans just kind of think they're insane or 
really hyper. It's very interesting. I'm very intrigued by it. There's also like a demon witch vampire yoga class, which I'm very into. <laughs> so yeah, I would definitely recommend this. It's interesting, it's fall, and it's definitely like witch season for reading, which is all the time. It's good. I'm very excited to get into this trilogy. I did, ooh, I almost forgot. I did finish The Crooked Kingdom. Let me grab it. Oh my god, where did I put it? It's on the wrong shelf. I need a bigger bookshelf. I have finished Crooked Kingdom by Leah Bardugo. It is a duology, the Six of Crow series, and I loved it. It was heists on heists on heists on heists. It was so good. And I love, like, I'm not a big heist movie fan, but I love reading about them because you, they like drop hints about like the plan. So they have the plan and everyone's on board with the plan, but you know, there's also a secret plan that they're not, not everyone's in on. So she drops hints to that secret plan. So then you think you figure out the secret plan, but then the main character Kaz has like a super duper secret plan that nobody was expecting except himself really good and it really went into like the characters dealing with the traumas of their early lives and I think it handled it really well and it just made it feel so much more real it was good it was so good it was really good I'm really bad at describing books I'm so sorry it definitely it like went more in depth into the characters and I'm hoping I don't think there's anything after this, but I'm hoping that she one day comes out with stuff. I haven't actually looked. She does have the Grisha series, which is all about the um, the kinds of magic in this. They're, the people who have magic are called Grisha. There's three different kinds. There's heart treaders, fabricators, and in, I want to call them incinerators, but I know that's not it. Hold on. Squallers. No, just kidding. Oh, no, there's more. Okay, so they have Heart Treaders, Healers, Squalors, Inferni, Tide Makers, Duress, and Alchemy. So I believe the Grisha line is three books and that goes more into like the Civil War about like the Grisha versus the government kind of thing. I've heard good things about it and I'm willing to give it a shot. And also this book is red on the inside and this series, I haven't had like a new new book since Harry Potter, but reading this, it was so new that some of the pages were still like not totally cut all the way. And so you just had that lovely little page turning like sound. Oh, it was beautiful. It made me so excited to turn the page. So I finished this. I got this for Christmas two years ago for my brother. Good job. You don't watch this podcast. So that's what I've been reading. Uh, the rest of this has been indie prep and wedding prep. We have finished painting all of the invitations. We have finished assembling and packing all of the boxes. We just have to figure out how shipping, the easiest way to or pack them for shipping and then get them out of the house. Yeah, and just lots of wedding stuff. Not too much, just enough to make me stressed. <laughs> but I'm excited to get into some sewing this week. I'm very excited to get past the indie prep. I'm behind by like three days on my dyeing. So usually Fridays I don't die, but this Friday I'm gonna try and get a couple rounds in. And that's, it's just been a lot of work, lots of work. I love fall, but it is a very busy season for me. So with that, I'm going to pour myself some more tea, go start dyeing some yarn and knitting on some projects, and I will see you guys hopefully next week. Thank you for watching, bye. All right, let's do this. It's so fall out.